Often, before I fall asleep, I can't help but take one last dip. And I never know when it will hit me, or exactly how, just that it will. And then boom. There it is. The personal news klaxon. Usually followed by a new job or book deal, house, car, baby, dream, holiday, definitely something I should be happy for them about. And I am. But I also can't help that uncomfortable feeling, that jab in the gut I felt as if it was some sort of judgement on my own life. It feels easier than ever to compare our lives to others, to measure the gap between what we have and what we think we want to have. And that gap causes us pain, that gap is envy. And I can't help but wonder if social media is driving us to be more envious than we've ever been. And in a strange way, might that actually be good for us? Of course, there is nothing modern about our feelings of envy. Some of the greatest thinkers of the ancient world pondered it. One well-known ancient approach to envy was that of Aristotle. In his ethics, he talked about envy as a undesirable emotion because of its urge to take away goodness. The envious person wanted to pull down other people to their level and it thereby uh, decreased the amount of goodness in the world. Uh, that generally negative view of envy uh, was certainly picked up by Christianity. It became a deadly sin in the early Middle Ages. And uh, that uh, general characterization of envy as an undesirable and even wicked response uh, continues. The 18th century German philosopher, Immanuel Kant, maintained that all kinds of envy are destructive claiming envy aims at least in terms of one's wishes at destroying others' good fortune. I mean, it's little wonder, really, that discussing and even acknowledging our own feelings of envy has become such a taboo. I really love the people who say that they were never envious. Okay? <laughs> you know, it's bec because, like, we so, we're so programmed to hide it from ourselves. It's really, and, and our research shows it very clearly, there seems to me to be a certain irony in the way that we blind ourselves to our own feelings of envy, and given how closely envy is often linked to sight. Take Dante in his Divine Comedy, who gruesomely depicts the envious in purgatory as having their eyes sewn shut with iron threads. This is seen by some as a way to prevent them seeing and therefore envying the good fortune of others, or as a way to protect others from the malevolence of their envious gaze. This itself links into the ancient tradition of the evil eye, a curse transmitted through a malicious glare, usually inspired by envy. So perhaps the fact that social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram have become so image-focused is what in part makes them so effective at stirring envy within us. We're always making decisions about how to present ourselves to others. What social media allows us to do with filters and the ability to take multiple snapshots is just really accelerate this process, put it on steroids, so to speak. Yeah, one look at my phone reveals I'm definitely guilty of this hyper-curation. I mean, looking back, I wonder why I had to take 20 identical photos of my daughter, searching for that ideal image when, of course, each one was perfect in its own right. I often only post about the days out I have where the weather is great and everything looks idyllic. I don't post about the tantrums and arguments 30 seconds before that photo was taken. So I often think about social media as, as placing these envy landmines in front of us. We don't always know when we're going to get that hit of envy, right? And I think that is what makes it so pernicious to a certain degree. It's not just what triggers our envy that gives social media its power, but who we envy too. For me, it's never the super famous that stir up that uncomfortable feeling in my gut. A close friend's new, marginally bigger than my own house, stings infinitely more than Jeff Bezos holidaying in space. And there's a good reason for this. A lot of envy's power comes from the fact that uh, someone else's outperformance reflects badly on ourselves. And that's really only true for people who are otherwise quite comparable to ourselves. And who do we tend to fill our social media feeds with most? Friends, family, colleagues. 
we have essentially created giant Envy echo chambers. But my own relationship with Envy is kind of ambivalent. In a way, I believe it has also been motivational, at times driving me on to succeed. So perhaps there are other positive ways we can view this complex emotion. I mean, other cultures don't exclusively view envy in a negative light. For example, Russia has words for white and black envy. And a lot of the recent research into different types of envy has been inspired by the Dutch words beneiden for benign envy and affront for malicious envy. So malicious envy looks a lot like the traditional deadly sin, focusing on the person and wishing they didn't have what you want and experiencing pleasure at any misfortune they may suffer in what is known as the German word schadenfreude. But benign envy focuses more on the object of your envy and how you might achieve it for yourself. The idea is that this type of envy can actually motivate you to elevate and improve your own situation, perhaps bringing it closer to Aristotle's idea of emulation. However, this distinction between good and bad envy could be counterproductive. The problem with it is that it confounds the emotion with the outcome of the emotion, with what the emotion leads to, which is, for me as a scientist, a problem. In this way, perhaps it is better to view the emotion of envy itself as a mirror, reflecting back at us information about ourselves. What we do with that information is down to us. This chimes with the views of the German philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, who argued that envy was an important signal for what we really want, a fragment of our true potential that should be forensically studied. The minute you are able to say, I'm envious, you can start to discuss it with yourself. Okay, what am I envious of? What can I do about it? It really is a tool for self-reflection if a person is uh, willing to look at that information. It tells you what you desire. Uh, it reveals your insecurities. When we experience that little ping of envy, we can use that emotion as information that might then motivate us to take action, uh, to reconcile that, that discrepancy between where we are and where we want to be. Rather than blinding ourselves to our feelings of envy, like Dante's envious souls in purgatory, their eyes sewn shut, we should instead approach it with our eyes wide open and embrace what it is telling us. In this way, perhaps instead of creating a dangerous age of envy, social media is actually providing us with an opportunity to better understand ourselves.